7 is about Christ's rejection. Although Christ was accepted with anticipation because He was and is a miracle worker, now He's speaking more about uh, conversion and teaching about God and His relationship with God. And He is being rejected and challenged. He's being rejected and challenged because He's changed His focus from being a miracle worker to really, you know, last week he started it. This week, I mean, it started all the way through, but now he's actually talking to the people about conversion, more so when he's saying, I'm the light of the world, I'm the living water, I'm all this stuff. He started putting that extra in the, to it in the groups, not just as individuals. Even though, even, even by the ones, he's even being rejected by the ones who followed him and walked with him. Who's that? The disciples and all the people that he had performed all these miracles on. The feeding of the 5,000 was the most recent. He's being rejected. He's being challenged, uh, despised, rejected, challenged, mocked, and hated. How close to God are you willing to walk? Or are you walking? Last week I finished with John 15, 18, and 19. And I'm going to read 15 and 18 again this morning. If the world hates you, you know that it hated has hated me before it hated you. If you're of the world... The world lo loves its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you and out of the world because of this, the world hates you. We are hated as Christians if we live according to God's Word. Even if we mess it up sometimes, the world still hates us. The last verse before today's message from last week the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify it of the deeds, its deeds are evil. And that was talking about Jesus himself says the world hates him because he's telling the world about how evil things are in the world. Today's message starts with, slide one, there's a time and a reason for everything. It's John chapter 7 verses 8 and 9. Go up. Go up to the feast yourselves. I do, not, I do not go up to the feast because my time is not, full, not yet fully come. Having said these things to them, he stayed in Galilee. What's he talking about? The people that were with Jesus at the time, mainly his brothers, were trying to set up, like I talked about last week, they were trying to set up an earthly kingdom for Jesus. And they said it was easy for Jesus to do that because He was what? A miracle worker. Jesus was more than a miracle work worker. Uh, this was the third time, my time has not yet come, this is the third time in the book of John Jesus uses the words, my time is not here, or fully come. It's saying, it's not time for me to become the Savior. It's not time for me to show I'm the Savior. It's not time for me to take over because it's not ready. It's not time for me to go that extra yet. This is the second time in, chap in the chapter uh, this is the second time in this chapter. This time, the second reason was for, uh, was for the use was because he refused to go to the feast with his brothers who were not believers yet. They had alternative motives, and I said that last week. Although the Jews at this point, this point were really challenging him, Jesus, and they wanted to kill him, it was not God's timing in his life for this. 
It wasn't, got, it wasn't time for Jesus to go. But it's interesting to me that in the next verse, you'll find out he went almost immediately. John 7, 6 says, So Jesus said to them, My time is not yet here, but your time is always an opportune. And what he was saying there was, Because you walk with me, you know who I am, and your time is ready. You just got to accept. He was talking to the, the ones that were following Jesus. Galatians 4.4 4 says, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth His Son before the woman born under the law. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, it's always about God's timing. It's not about my timing. It's not about my individual timing, and it's not about your timing. It's about God's timing. Jesus committed to the Father's timetable and would not allow any divisive defiance, confusion from what God had ordained or decreed. Jesus wouldn't step ahead of God. Sometimes we get ourselves in trouble because we step ahead of God. We need to always pray. Ron said it this morning about his test and his, all these things that they're, they're trying to do for him. John, or I went blank, I'm sorry. Ron and Deb are praying constantly about what to do next. Ron can tell you a month and a half ago, two months ago, when the doctors were trying to schedule something for me, and I absolutely refused it because of the things that were going on. I was searching God, and I called Ron for counsel, okay? Because I think some things are just absolutely ridiculous. Now that things have progressed a little bit, I know that there are certain things that I have to do. But it's not going to be things that I'm just going to go into blindly I'm going to pray about everything that they present me with. That's what we all need to do, is pray about everything that we are presented with when something happens in our life. You have not because you ask not. That's what the Bible says. Jesus was committed to the Father's timetable. In this verse that I just read, it says he stayed in Galilee. The disciples went on to Judea. And they were begging Jesus to go with him. But Jesus stayed in Galilee. Jesus stayed in Galilee to, Galilee to separate himself from his brothers. Remember, they wanted him to set up an earthly kingdom. And to separate himself from the crowds. Jesus could have went. And what would he have been? He would have been a, skept, a spectacle. Next slide. Jesus shows up unannounced. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he himself went up. These two next little phrases are very important. Not publicly. He didn't show up publicly. He didn't go out there and say, I'm here, everybody look at me. Jesus went, he just showed up in the back, off the grid, basically. He showed up because he did not want people to immediately flock to him and not have the opportunity to present the word. But as if in secret. He didn't show up publicly, and he showed up in secret. Jesus, because of the miracles, had become a public figure. Over and over, people have come to him or followed him, this was one opportunity for Jesus to separate himself from everybody else. No followers, no news media, 
Now, I know they didn't have news media, but, but people watched everything that Jesus did. If you remember, when right after He fed the 5,000, Jesus went up to the mountain and separated Himself. And people were trying their best to follow Jesus. They were trying their best to find out where Jesus was at, and they didn't catch up with Him until Capernaum. Caperni Capernaum. Capernaum. Didn't catch up with Him until Capernaum. So what did Jesus do those hours? He separated Himself and went off by Himself to pray. Sometimes we need to separate ourselves and go off and pray. I even put here, no news media, no spies. People weren't People couldn't find Jesus. People could not find Jesus this time, even though the disciples, the brothers, knew where He's at. Jesus slipped through, not as a public figure, not as a fanfare, and not for publicity, but in secret. My notes sort of got messed up here, so I'm going to read this first. It was my fault. The verses 11 through 13, verses 11 through 13 are about the hostility of the Jews, the authorities. Uh, the, we have civil authorities and people with the platform today that are coming out and even being outspoken against believers. The name of Jesus provokes the same controversy today. If you speak about Jesus today, if you practice your faith today, it creates controversy. Just like in this portion of Scripture, Jesus' name was producing controversy. How do we know that? Verse 11, so the Jews were speaking, seeking Him at the feast and were saying, where is He? Where is He? Where is Jesus at? What's Jesus doing? There was a difference in the day, in day-to-day -day miracle chasers and the Jews, the religious right. Jesus knew, because He was all-knowing, what was happening? It was quite possible that the religious right, because they were headquartered in Judea, they would have been hostile because He was changing the church. Was Jesus changing things in biblical days? Yes. Is Jesus changing things today? Not near as much, but yes. The church is standing out there. They're being something. And what happens is, is when things start changing out of the normal, out of the government way of doing things, out of the, the news people, out of the public figures face today, people get upset and they start attacking everything we're doing. Everything that a Christian does, everything in the church. Think of California there was more emphasis put on the churches in California to close and they were leaving bars open. Why? Because the church changes lives. The bars do too, for the worst reason. Okay? They, did, they let everything else open up, but they kept the churches closed. Next slide. Everything changes with a powerful influence. I just talked about the Jews, and I'm going to talk about the Jews again in a minute. There was much grumbling among the crowds concerning Him. Who were the crowds? This isn't talking about the Jews. This is talking about the people that were following Jesus. And they were grumbling, and they were complaining, they were concerned. Some were saying he's a good man. Just a good man. Others were saying no. To the contrary, he leads people astray. Yet no one was speaking openly about, open about him for fear of the Jews. 
Who were the Jews? The church. The power of the church. People were not speaking openly because of the power of the religious right. People don't speak openly today because we don't agree with everybody. Because we don't agree with government. We don't agree with government churches. We don't agree with this. We believe in freedom of worship. Freedom to believe. Grumbling crowds. At this point, when they got around the influence of Judea, the church, and the people of so-called importance made up of Judeans, Galileans, and scattered Jews, there were a lot of different beliefs, attitudes, and religious opinions, power, and social and economic. Are all of those in play today? The church, the economic things going on, the, the news media, the movie stars, all of those people that try to influence the world today. I get aggravated. I quit watching certain news channels because of the political bias against the church. One commentator recently, and it showed up on a news media that I watch, attacked the Christians, and he says, I can't believe that Christians are against this bill. What was the bill? Abortion. I can't believe they're against immigration. I can't believe they're against this. Everybody, uh, homosexuality. They just kept on, kept on. They were politicizing things that are anti-God, but yet they're against the Christian, they didn't call out church, they called out Christians because they are against what the biblical, what the Bible says is wrong. And when we bow down to that, just like we talked this morning about, in Sunday school, about things we were listening to a Christian TV program, and then they brought in as a commercial while I was watching this Christmas, this Christian TV, they brought in homosexuality on this Christian advertisement, on this non-Christian advertisement while we were watching a Christian program. They're attacking us. The world's attacking us. And Jesus, even in His day, knew that he would be attacked. I put, today, Democrats, liberal, liberals, Republicans, Gen X, and Gen Z attack us. Anyone who expressed who Christ is, it ranged from... And in the passage that I just read, it ranged from superficial acceptance. What? He was a miracle worker. He was a good man. Cynical acceptance. He was a troublemaker. He leads people away from the national way, the national religion, the national thing that had been accepted in Judea because they were the only ones right, and nobody can sway from them. Today, the world thinks they're the only ones right, and nobody can go against them. And what brought it on? What really brought it on at this point in the book of John? His religion just didn't add up. What did he say that made it not add up? I and my Father are one. You drink of this water and you'll never thirst again. You eat of this bread and you'll never hunger. That's the two things that have already coming up. And they're coming against Christ because He was the very Son of God and yet, 
nobody wanted accepting. The Jewish Talmud, the Jewish body that made up the Jewish civil authority and the ceremony law, religious, there were two versions of the Talmud. This deception became the predominant opinion of many Jews, Babylonians, Talmud, and Sanhedrin. What do we have today? Opinions. Opinions today. The Bible is wrong. There's no God. There's no truth. If there is a way to heaven, and I don't believe there's a heaven, that's what people say, I'm a good person, and I'll be there. Is that what's in society today? Is that what people believe today? If I just live a certain way, if I don't steal, if I don't do this, I don't murder anybody. You can even get by with stealing to now as long as you don't murder anybody. If I don't do anything wrong, if I live according to my inner law, I don't have to obey any other law. And I can go to heaven just because I'm a good person. That's not scriptural. But yet, the world is swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. We said this morning in Sunday school, Bible study, we're so concerned about our younger generation. We can teach it, we can preach it, but you know what we're called? Dad, you just don't understand. You're just an old fogey. I've heard that recently. Dad, you just don't understand. Times are changing. You need to change with the times. It's happening. Even in the world today, it's happening. From good parents that have tried their best to raise their kids in a good Christian home, then they send them off to college, and then they really fall off the deep end. Why? Maybe it's because I didn't live the life I should have when I was younger. I'll take blame for that. But I've tried to change my life and I've tried to help my kids along. But my grandkids, some things think I'm silly. Papa, times are different. God's Word isn't different. God's Word hadn't changed. Who's changed? We have. Verses 43 and 44 into this chapter. So division occurred in the crown because of him. Why? Because Jesus was speaking the truth and nobody wants to follow the truth. What's the end of verse 43? What's verse 44 say? And some, and this is the world today. It was the world then. And some of them wanted to seize him. But God protected him. Why did God protect him? Because his time wasn't there. But no one laid their hands on him. See, Jesus came to earth for a purpose. That purpose was to change the world. That purpose was to lead men to Him, to God, through Him to God. But nobody wants to accept that. Why? It's too easy. It doesn't make sense. So what were they wanting to do? They wanted to take Him over. They wanted to lay their hands on Him. That was to the world. Now this one's to the church. John 9, 16. We'll be there in a few weeks. Therefore, some of the Pharisees were saying, who were the Pharisees? The religious right. The church. The church. This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. What did he do on the Sabbath that he wasn't supposed to? He picked grain, if I remember correctly. I didn't look it up, but that was one of the things he did on the Sabbath. Was he glean, or he picked grain in the field. 
He told someone to carry their cloak on the Sabbath. Just carry your jacket. Just carry your jacket. They, he wasn't following the law of the religious rite. Because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others were saying, how can a man who is a sinner, was Jesus a sinner? Did Jesus have one sin in his life? Except for the so-called sins that the religious rite was putting on him? Working on the Sabbath? Speaking on the Sabbath? Carrying your cloak on the Sabbath? Was that making him a sinner? Or is that making him the Son of God? How can a man be a sinner? Perform such signs. And there was division among them. Is there division among church today? Churches today. Is there a division against, uh, among different groups I do not agree with every group, but if they're preaching the Word of God and, and people are getting saved, I don't care whether, and I, I get in trouble for this all the time, I don't care if they're baptized, dunked, or sprinkled. I don't care. Because it's a heart decision, not a... or, or water hose. I'll take a water hose and spray them off if that fix, makes them feel better. And I know I'm going out there. But we put too much emphasis on things that are man, not God. Yes, I believe in immersion. I believe immersion is important. But it's not essential. It's not essential. So why are we going to let the world tear us apart, tell the, tear the church apart for those little bitty things that the churches individually get hung up on? I'm sorry. You can kick me out if that's what you if you want to go the other way. But you have to kick Ron out too, wouldn't you, Ron? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Let's not get hung up on the non-significant, but get hung up on the significant. Saved by grace through faith alone. That's what the Bible says. There's nothing else that can save me under the sun.